There's always a risk-benefit analysis that happens when one looks at research. It's not the case that all risks and all high risk taking is a good thing. Sometimes it leads to disasters. And frankly, one should always be asking, is the risk presented by the research worth the benefit that one might gain from the research? And exactly what is the benefit and who will reap that benefit? This is the most intense neutrino beam that's ever been built. This is the first time we've ever made measurements comparing what neutrinos do, having so many different materials in one experiment and being able to compare them side by side. So you're wondering why on earth are we underground to do this experiment? It would be a lot easier if we could just do this experiment above ground. The idea is that you, you build a neutrino beam that goes through the Earth. Since the Earth is round, you can shoot a beam straight through, and that's how you do the measurements. I love it underground. It's, it's nice, it's quiet. We want to make sure that we understand all the risks that are involved in that, and, and I divide these risks up into the common things, the things that we have to look out for all the time, we have uncommon things. Those are things that have happened before, but rarely. And then we have, to, of course, to worry about the things that have never happened before, and we hope don't, but we want to be prepared in case they do. The key question is, to what extent is our behavior increasing or decreasing the risk of the next 9-11? American forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq what nearly 95% of all suicide attacks around the world since the early 1980s have in common is not religion, but a specific strategic objective to compel a democratic state to withdraw combat forces from territory the terrorists consider to be their homeland or prize greatly. The findings, of course, that I'm presenting are controversial, so that I knew right from the beginning it was going to be important to have highly corroborated data, and not just data that would be possibly verifiable, but deeply verified, so that when um, serious people were examining it, either for peer review in journals or uh, in Washington, they care less about peer reviewed in journals, they want to peer review it themselves. There's been increased concern in the era of terrorism. Researchers have created a form of the deadly bird flu virus. Around publication of results that could potentially be used by someone who has malintentions. It's more than about uh, safety in the laboratory. It really goes out to the utility of the information itself. This was at the time of the breakup of the Soviet Union. The U.S. government was able to get an agreement. We purchased from Russia 500 metric tons of highly enriched uranium. And this material was their excess nuclear weapon material. We needed to go into those facilities and we would take all of that paperwork in addition to all of the observations that we made and twist it and turn it in every possible way to look at it to make sure that the Russians were doing what they said they were going to do. The laboratory setting is, is ultimately the safest setting in which to do work. You have, you have ultimate control in the laboratory. Very complex heating, ventilation, air conditioning controls where you maintain a negative airflow so that if you did have a spill in the laboratory, it wouldn't escape the laboratory. All the work is performed in what we call biological safety cabinets, which is like a fume hood, but it's, it's for work with particulates. For the first year, we really, really weren't sure what to expect. Would the radiation levels be high? We had no idea. So in addition to wearing Russian, nuclear dosimeters. We also wore our own U.S. dosimeters. So after we would leave, the Russian would read our dosimeters and they would tell us what they thought the radiation dose that we got was. And at the same time, we'd bring those back to the U.S. 
and they would then, you know, be reading them, you know, back in the U.S. And as it turned out, uh, the contamination levels were very low. Any issues that we were concerned about in terms of radiation safety, you know, really turned out to be a non-issue. If you think you understand the universe and you don't understand neutrinos, you're fooling yourself. We're measuring things that nobody's measured before. What leads people to get involved in high-stakes research? One of the most important things, I think, is a certain willingness to go against the grain, combined with a willingness to follow where the evidence and logic really go. Every day, everyone does a risk-benefit analysis. For many things we do, you just don't really think about it. We get on airplanes all the time. Uh, we drive our cars. And so there are many activities for which there is uh, an assumed risk. It's risk that we're willing to take because the benefits are so great. But at the end of the day, it's still risky work. 